From the 17th of November AD 9 to 23 24 June 79, Vespasian ruled as the Roman Emperor, succeeding in stabilizing the empire after a period of political turmoil known as the Year of the Four Emperors. As the fourth and final emperor of this time, he established the Flavian dynasty, which maintained control of the empire for over two decades. Under Vespasian's leadership, the empire underwent significant fiscal reforms and experienced political consolidation, which enabled the vast Roman building program. Unlike many of his predecessors, Vespasian was not born into an aristocratic family. He began his career as a member of the equestrian class and only later achieved senatorial status. Vespasian's reputation was built on his success in military campaigns, including serving as legate of Legio II Augusta during the Roman invasion of Britain in 43 and subduing the Jewish rebellion in Judea in 66. During Vespasian's siege of Jerusalem, Emperor Nero died by suicide, causing Rome to plunge into a year of civil war. The year of the four emperors saw Galba and Otho briefly take the throne before Vitellius assumed power in April 69. However, the Roman legions in Egypt and Judea declared Vespasian their leader, and on 1 July 69, he was proclaimed emperor. In his quest for the throne, Vespasian allied with Mucianus, the governor of Syria, and Primus, a general in Pannonia. Vespasian's son, Titus, was left to command the forces laying siege to Jerusalem. Primus and Mucianus led the Flavian army against Vitellius, while Vespasian himself took control of Egypt. On 20 December 69, Vitellius was defeated, and the following day, Vespasian was declared emperor by the Senate. Vespasian, originally named Titus Flavius Vespasianus, was born in Philacrini, a village to the northeast of Rome. He hailed from a relatively unremarkable family with no noble ancestry to speak of. Vespasian's father, Titus Flavius Sabinus, was a Roman who worked as a moneylender, debt collector, and tax collector, while his mother, Vespasia Polla, was a member of the equestrian order. Her father served as the prefect of the camp, and her brother became a senator. Vespasian received his education in the countryside, in Cosa near Ancedonia, Italy. His paternal grandmother was his primary tutor, and he remained attached to the places of his childhood, even as an emperor, leaving his former villa untouched. Vespasian initially lived in the shadow of his older brother, Titus Flavius Sabinus, who had already entered public life and pursued the cursus honorum, holding a significant military command in the Danube. In contrast, Vespasian served in the army as a military tribune in Thrace in 36 AD. He was elected quaestor the next year and served in Creta at Cyanaica. Vespasian's ascent through the ranks of Roman public office continued, and he became an aedile on his second attempt in 39, and a praetor on his first attempt in 40, making good use of the opportunity to gain favour with Emperor Caligula. In preparation for a praetorship, Vespasian had to complete two periods of service in the minor magistracies, one military and the other public. He spent around three years in Thracia in the military before returning to Rome to take up a post in the Vigintivirate, which was responsible for minor magistracies such as street cleaning. However, his early performance was unsatisfactory, and Emperor Caligula is said to have filled his toga with debt to show him how much work needed to be done. During Sejanus's rise to power, there is no record of Vespasian's political activities. After completing his term in the Vigintivirate, Vespasian was qualified to stand for election as a quester. However, his lack of political or family influence meant that he served as a quester in one of the provincial posts in Crete, rather than as an assistant to important men in Rome. Vespasian later went on to achieve many accomplishments as an emperor, including financial reform and the building of the Roman Colosseum. Subsequently, Vespasian aimed to acquire a praetorship which granted him the imperium, but the non-patricians and those without influential connections were required to serve in an intermediate post as an aedile or tribune. Despite failing in his first attempt to gain an aedileship, Vespasian was successful in his second attempt and became an aedile in 38. Although he lacked significant family connections and hadn't achieved notable success in office, he managed to attain the praetorship at the earliest age permissible in 39 or 40 during a tumultuous period of election reorganization. 
It's possible that his long-standing relationship with freedwoman Antonia Kinas, who served as confidential secretary to Antonia Minor, contributed to his success, as she was part of the inner circle of courtiers and servants around the emperor. Following the ascension of Claudius as emperor in 41, Vespasian was appointed legate of Legio II Augusta stationed in Germania, thanks to the influence of imperial freedman Narcissus. In 43, Vespasian and the two Augusta participated in the Roman invasion of Britain and distinguished themselves under the overall command of Aulus Plautius. After playing a vital role in early battles on the rivers Medway and Thames, Vespasian was dispatched to subdue the southwest, penetrating through modern counties such as Hampshire, Wiltshire, Dorset, Somerset, Devon, and Cornwall with the probable objectives of securing the south coast ports and harbours along with the tin mines of Cornwall and the silver and lead mines of Somerset. Vespasian led his troops from Novi Omegus Reginorum to quell the hostile Duritruges and Dumnonii tribes, ultimately capturing 20 Opida. He also invaded Vectis and established a fortress and legionary headquarters at Isca Dumnoniorum. During this time, he sustained an injury which he didn't fully recover from until his time in Egypt. His successful campaign earned him triumphal regalia on his return to Rome. His accomplishments as the legate of a legion paved the way for his consulship in 51, following which he retired from public life after incurring the wrath of Claudius' wife, Agrippina, who was the most dominant and influential figure during her husband's reign. However, he returned from retirement in 63 as governor of the Africa province. Vespasian utilized his time in North Africa wisely, contrary to the norm for ex-consuls who often viewed governorships as opportunities to extort large sums of money to recoup the funds they spent during their prior political campaigns. Corruption was so rampant that it was almost anticipated that a governor would return from these appointments with full pockets. Nevertheless, Vespasian spent his time in North Africa building relationships rather than accumulating wealth an approach that would prove far more valuable in the future. During his time in North Africa, he encountered financial difficulties and had to mortgage his estates to his brother. To recover his finances, he ventured into the mule trade and earned the moniker Mulio. After his return from Africa, Vespasian travelled with Nero's entourage to Greece. However, he fell out of favour with the emperor after supposedly not paying enough attention during one of Nero's lyre performances and was subsequently relegated to political obscurity. In 66 AD, Vespasian was appointed to quell the ongoing Jewish rebellion in Judea, following the defeat of the previous governor and the retreat of the governor of Syria. Vespasian led two legions, accompanied by his son Titus and they were successful in re-establishing Roman control over the region. During this time, Vespasian also became the patron of Flavius Josephus, a Jewish resistance leader who would later document the history of his people in Greek. Despite the violence and destruction that accompanied the Roman reconquest of Judea, Josephus remembered Vespasian as a fair and humane official, in contrast to the demonized Herod Agrippa II. Josephus also recounted a story of Vespasian testing the Dead Sea's buoyancy by throwing captive Jews who could not swim into the water. Following the death of Nero in 68, Rome was plagued by political turmoil and civil war. Vespasian was eventually proclaimed emperor after a succession of short-lived rulers, with the support of eastern generals and the backing of a prophecy that he would become a ruler from Judea. Vespasian and his son Titus began preparing to challenge for the throne in early 69, but did not make a move until later that year. Vespasian garnered support from influential figures such as Gaius Licinius Mucianus, the governor of Syria, and eventually declared himself emperor with the loyalty of legions from Alexandria, Judea, and Syria. Despite facing opposition from the armies of Gaul and the Rhineland, Vespasian's popularity grew rapidly and he became the de facto ruler of half of the Roman world, with the support of legions from Moesia, Pannonia, and Illyricum. During Vespasian's time in Egypt, he secured the crucial grain supply for Rome while his troops, under the leadership of Marcus Antonius Primus, entered Italy from the northeast. They defeated Vitellius' army at Bedriacum and advanced towards Rome, sacking Cremona along the way. Vitellius made a hasty peace with Antonius, but the emperor's praetorian guard forced him to retain his position. Eventually, Antonius' army entered Rome, resulting in chaos, the destruction of the capital by fire 
and the killing of Vespasian's brother Sabinus by a mob. Upon hearing of his rival's defeat and death, Vespasian, the new emperor, sent urgently needed grain to Rome from Alexandria, along with an edict promising to reverse Nero's laws, particularly those concerning treason. While in Egypt, he visited the temple of Serapis, where he reportedly had a vision. He was later approached by two laborers who believed that he possessed the power to perform miracles. Tiberius Julius Alexander, the prefectus Egypti, proclaimed Vespasian emperor at Alexandria on 1 July 69 AD. As a Hellenized Jew related to Philo of Alexandria, he helped Vespasian assert control over the entire empire through the critical Egyptian grain harvest. Vespasian was the first emperor and pharaoh since Augustus to visit Egypt. At the Hippodrome of Alexandria, he was hailed as pharaoh and declared to be the son of the creator deity Amun, in the style of the ancient pharaohs, and an incarnation of Serapis, in the manner of the Ptolemies. To demonstrate his divine election, Vespasian performed the traditional act of spitting on and trampling a blind and crippled man, miraculously healing him, as required by pharaonic precedent. Vespasian was declared emperor by the Senate on 21 December 69 while he was still in Egypt, the Egyptians had already declared him emperor in the summer. Musianus, aided by Vespasian's son, Domitian, was appointed to administer the empire in the short term, beginning with tax reform to restore the finances. After Vespasian arrived in Rome in mid-70s, Musianus continued to urge him to collect as many taxes as possible. They renewed old taxes and imposed new ones, increased tribute from the provinces, and kept a close eye on treasury officials. Vespasian even introduced a urine tax on public toilets, previously imposed by Nero under the name of Vectical Urini in the 1st century AD. This tax was removed for a while but was reintroduced by Vespasian around 70 AD to replenish the treasury. Although the policy was successful, it was not well received by his son Titus, who criticized him for it. When Titus complained about even taxing urine, Vespasian famously responded by holding a piece of the money to his nose and asking him if it stunk, saying and yet, it is derived from urine. This phrase has since been used to justify the questionable or illegal origin of money. During the early 70s, Vespasian stayed in Egypt, which was the primary source of Rome's grain supply. Tacitus reported that bad weather caused the delay in his departure to Rome, but some modern historians believe Vespasian was solidifying support from the Egyptians before leaving. Rumors of Vespasian performing miraculous healings spread in Egypt. However, there were protests in Alexandria over his new tax policies, and the shipment of grain to Rome was disrupted. Vespasian eventually quelled the unrest and resumed the grain shipments. Meanwhile, there were ongoing uprisings and civil wars in the rest of the empire, particularly in Judea where rebellion had been simmering since 66. Vespasian's son, Titus, finally crushed the rebellion in 70 by capturing Jerusalem and destroying the Jewish temple. According to Eusebius, Vespasian ordered the persecution of all descendants of the Davidic royal line. Some historians believe Vespasian did this to suppress any rival claimants to the throne, especially since he had been prophesied to become emperor while in Judea. In addition, Vespasian and Titus showed imperial patronage to Egyptian temples, attending consecrations, and making offerings. However, they sacked the Jewish temple at Leontopolis in 73. In January 70, the Second Batavian Rebellion erupted in Gaul and Germany, led by Gaius Julius Civilis and Julius Sabinus. Sabinus proclaimed himself Emperor of Gaul, claiming he was descended from Julius Caesar. The rebellion defeated and absorbed two Roman legions before it was suppressed by Vespasian's son-in-law by the end of the year. Vespasian finally arrived in Rome in mid-70s, and immediately took steps to secure his power and prevent further revolts. He rewarded supporters in the military and the public, while punishing those loyal to Vitellius. He also restructured the Senate and the equestrian orders to remove his enemies and add his allies. Regional autonomy of Greek provinces was abolished, and Vespasian made significant efforts to control public perception of his rule. Although he initially lacked auctorators and maesters, Vespasian's reign was characterized by an increase in propaganda that aimed to legitimize his right to rule through successful conquest. 
The theology of victory centered around his victory in Judea, with stories of a supernatural emperor destined to rule circulating throughout the empire. Nearly one-third of all coins minted under Vespasian celebrated military victory or peace. The word Vindex was removed from coins to avoid reminding the public of rebellious figures. Vespasian also commissioned histories that were biased in his favor, and he oversaw the construction of a temple of peace in the Forum. Vespasian also rewarded writers with financial incentives during his reign. Contemporary historians such as Tacitus, Suetonius, and Josephus speak highly of Vespasian while condemning his predecessors. Tacitus acknowledges that Vespasian elevated his status, while Josephus identifies him as a benefactor and rescuer. Pliny the Elder even dedicated his natural histories to Vespasian's son, Titus. However, those who spoke out against Vespasian were subject to punishment. Several Stoic philosophers were accused of corrupting their students with inappropriate teachings and were expelled from Rome. Helvidius Priscus, a pro-republic philosopher, was executed for his teachings. Many other philosophers and writers had their works confiscated, destroyed, and discredited for being too critical of Vespasian's rule, some even after their death. Between 71 and 79, much of Vespasian's reign remains a mystery. Historians report that he commissioned the construction of several buildings in Rome and survived several attempts on his life. Vespasian played a role in rebuilding Rome after the Civil War and was responsible for the construction of the Temple of Peace and the Temple to the Deified Claudius. He also began building the Colosseum, utilizing funds obtained from the spoils of the Jewish Temple after the Siege of Jerusalem. Suetonius asserts that Vespasian was the target of constant conspiracies against him. While only one conspiracy is known, in 78 or 79, the reasons behind the attempted assassination by Eprius Morcellus and Aulus Cicina Aelianus remain unknown. Agricola was appointed to lead the Legio XX Valeria Victrix stationed in Britain, replacing Marcus Rocius Celius, who had incited a mutiny against the governor, Marcus Vettius Belanus. During the year of civil war, Britain had rebelled, and Belanus was a lenient governor. Agricola reinstated discipline within the legion and helped to establish Roman authority. In 71, Belanus was succeeded by a more aggressive governor, Quintus Petilius Cerialis, and Agricola exhibited his command abilities in campaigns against the brigands in northern England. During Vespasian's ninth term as consul, he fell ill while in Campania and returned to Rome before departing for Aquicutili and the surrounding countryside near Eate, where he spent his summers. However, his condition worsened, and he suffered from severe diarrhea. On his deathbed, he was overcome with the feeling of death and uttered the words, Ve, puto Deus Fio. According to Suetonius, he then suffered a sudden attack of diarrhea, which almost caused him to faint. He struggled to stand, declaring that an emperor should die on his feet, and died in the arms of those trying to assist him on June 23, 79 AD at the age of 69 years, 7 months, and 7 days. He was succeeded by his sons Titus and Domitian. Aside from his military prowess and commanding personality, Vespasian was known for his wit and amiable manner. He was generous to impoverished senators, equestrians, and towns devastated by natural calamities, and he bestowed pensions of up to 1,000 gold pieces a year upon men of letters and retools. Despite his liberal tendencies, Vespasian distrusted philosophers and even revived obsolete penal laws against them as a precautionary measure. He was patient with the frank language of his friends, the quips of pleaders, and the impudence of philosophers, but he executed only one philosopher, Helvidius Priscus, after repeated insults. Vespasian also dedicated much of his resources to public works and the restoration and beautification of Rome, including the Colosseum. Vespasian debased the denarius during his reign, reducing its silver purity from 93.5% to 90% and its weight from 2.97 grams to 2.87 grams. Interestingly, urinals in modern Romance languages are named after him, possibly in reference to a tax he placed on urine collection. Vespasian was born to a family of modest means. His paternal grandfather rose to the rank of centurion and fought at Pharsalus for Pompey in 48 BC before becoming a debt collector. 
Vespasian's father worked as a customs official and moneylender, and his mother's family held positions of prestige. Vespasian initially had no desire to pursue high public office but eventually entered public life and followed in his brother's footsteps. He married Flavia Domitilla, with whom he had two sons and a daughter, but both his wife and daughter died before he became emperor. He later entered into a long-standing relationship with Antonia Aquinas, who became his wife in all but formal status until her death in 75. Thanks for watching this video. If you like the video please subscribe to our channel.